It's the coldest hand that run down this land where the ocean lands. It's the tallest sound, the damn smallest crowd, but their hearts break loud. Far from ever feeling lost with me, I'll push you back towards the land and sea. G'day everyone and thanks for tuning in once again, uh, time for a new video. So this afternoon we've actually come out, uh, we've just been parked just a little boat ramp over here, we're about 30-35 minutes north on the coast of, uh, of Batemans Bay where I live and we came out this afternoon, uh, there was uh, a big storm coming through and looking on the radar, there was a huge amount of rain and there was supposed to be a lot of uh, cloud structure and lightning and that sort of thing so we came out thinking that we might have been able to get some uh, some good storm photos and try and get sort of in front of the storm and have the storm coming towards us and uh, hopefully get a bit of lightning or a bit of nice storm cloud structure or something like that. Uh, that hasn't happened. Uh, it just came in with pretty heavy rain. It's rained for probably an hour and a half on and off different showers and so forth but there hasn't really been any moody cloud or any structure or any lightning or anything like that so the rain's just stopping now what's really good is the conditions are actually starting to look really nice um, still lots of moody clouds out there there's a rainbow at, uh, just out here off the coast really nice um, seascape sort of rock structure here behind me with uh, a little gutter and a little bit of a channel coming in um, tide's pretty good, it's quite close to being high, it's just starting to uh, recede. So, gonna get the camera set up over here and uh, hopefully get a couple of moody seascape images, hopefully. So, let's go over there and uh, check it out. Hopefully I can talk you through a couple of images and um, hopefully we can get a couple of good shots. Just spun my microphone around here so you can hear me. Just this really nice sort of rock structure here. Uh, just in there, there's a nice where those waves are crashing. There's just a nice little gutter in there. You can see it coming in through there now. So my intention is to go over there and see if I can get a little bit of a seascape. You can see there's plenty of mood in the sky and in the ocean for that matter. So um, hopefully can make some decent images here. So I got my first composition set up here. 
a vertical shot this one so I'll I'll show you the shot with the video camera and see what you think. Um, I'm just going to use a, a dark grad filter on the sky, probably a three or a four stop filter. I'll try both, see which one suits the scene the best. Just try and get a bit of this water movement in the foreground here. In terms of shutter speed, I'm not sure yet. It'll be, my guess, it'll be between a half a second and one second. I'll just experiment with that. Still a little bit too much daylight almost, it's almost a little bit too glary. I wouldn't mind the sun blocking the clouds out, but it's sort of looking pretty promising. So um, we'll just start off here and see how we go. having lots of fun here this evening guys I haven't done much uh, talking to the camera here I've been watching these waves there's been some um, some pretty full-on waves coming over the rocks here so I've kept my eye on those been shooting at a few different angles the light sort of the light sort of changed it's been good and bad and good and bad but I think overall I've got some good images I must admit I mentioned in my last video I do struggle to go out and shoot video and images well together um, it's hard it's not an easy thing to do so I find because uh, I'm really more of a photographer than a video person I get more focused on taking photos than I do on taking video um, but I'm doing my best so I think I've got some good, good images for you to have a look at anyway so that's definitely a positive I'm gonna actually keep shooting here because um, it's getting pretty close to sunset now it's actually uh, about 20 minutes until sunset now. Uh, the light's still pretty good. The sky's still quite moody. There's been a few rain showers. Um, I've been experimenting with a lot of different shutter speeds. The shutter speed that seems to be working the best is uh, six tenths of a second, which is zero dash six, which is the next shutter speed uh, in length from half a second. So you've got half a second and then the next one up. Uh, it's just a little bit longer than half a second. Uh, I'm finding that seems to be working the best. So um, I'll report back with some settings. I'll put some settings on the images as well so you can see them. Uh, see how we go. I was just talking to a bloke over here before. Uh, he thought I was taking photos of whales. Uh, he said there was actually two whales just in the bay here yesterday evening, right in front of me here, only couple of hundred meters away um, I'm gonna try a couple more compositions I'll keep tinkering around here and um, see how we go so that we'll hang around until sunset and um, yeah hopefully get some moody moody images right on sunset So guys, in this video this week I've actually decided to change things up a bit and if you hang around until a bit later in the video I'm actually going to bring an image up on the screen here and just talk you through some of my editing techniques. So uh, stick around for that and also there's some great images to come. Still shooting guys, um, conditions are absolutely insane at the moment, walking in puddles, 
The light's amazing. Just trying really hard to get some images here. It's, it's tricky to do video at the same time. The sky behind me is just amazing. Lots of um, really nice colour. Golden light. Heaps of mood in the ocean. Just looks cool. Some orange glow in uh, most directions. Lots of dark moody clouds. I think I even seen some lightning a second ago. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. We'll get back to shooting. guys well as mentioned earlier in the video uh, I've decided to do a little bit of a quick edit session here with you and just sort of talk you through my uh, techniques and a little bit of my thought process around the editing side of things so we'll get straight into it this image on the screen this is a raw file straight out of the camera um, I've opened this up in Adobe Camera Raw uh, most of my editing these days is done in Adobe Camera Raw I don't use Lightroom uh, but if you are a Lightroom user, uh, you'll find all the steps that I do here in Camera Raw almost identical to uh, the Lightroom suite, so you'll certainly be able to understand what I'm doing. Uh, most of my editing these days, as I said, is done here in Adobe Camera Raw. Since the new updates in the last few months, and even the latest one that's only happened in the last few weeks, you have a lot of control over things here. There's lots of things you can do using um, the different types of uh, masks. You can use... Uh, the adjustment brush, the radial filters and the graduated filters to make uh, adjustments wherever you want them. So this image you can see, we'll jump straight into it, straight out of camera, we look up the top right hand side here, ISO 400, uh, 16 to 35 millimeter lens at 16 mil, uh, shot at f8 and the shutter speed is 0.50, so half a second. 
Uh, as far as profile goes, I normally just leave this as is, the Adobe Color. Uh, there is another one there called, was well, a few, but uh, another one there that people like to use is called Standard. Sometimes a standard profile can give you sort of more flatter, muted tones, but I stick with the Adobe Color one. Um, most of the editing that I do is what I call um, local adjustments. So there's two types of adjustments. There's global adjustments, and a global adjustment means that... Um, it affects the entire image, whatever adjustment you make in, uh, affects the entire image. And then you have what's called a local adjustment, which is only affects um, selected parts of the image. So a lot of my editing is done with local adjustments where I just um, affect certain parts of the image. But uh, believe it or not, my editing process is not that technical. Um, it's really all about shooting the image properly from the start. When you're out in the field shooting, about taking your time and getting all the little fundamentals right and getting your raw file uh, as good as you can get it. And then that sort of minimizes your editing time later on. So I'm, I'm very proactive in, in terms of doing that. So we'll jump straight into it. Uh, we'll just work our way down these sliders. The first one at the top where it says optics, uh, there's two tick boxes there, remove chromatic aberration. And the second one is the profile corrections. That just uh, adjusts your lens profile. Basically what that's doing is getting rid of any of the um, wide angle lens distortion. I do that on almost every image unless I actually want some lens distortion in the image. Then I move over to the basic slider and I just start to work my way down these sliders. I don't do too much and uh, fortunately this image here is pretty good image straight out of the camera. So uh, I don't need to do a huge amount to this image. So first one we do, we just work our way down here. Exposure, I'll probably pull the exposure down a little bit on this image. Contrast I won't use. Highlights I'll probably pull those down uh, a little bit. Shadows, I'll probably pull those up just a little bit, not too much, probably about there. And that's about it to start out with. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, start using the, um, the different sorts of filters here. So if we go over to the right hand side um, where it says masking, you click on that and that gives you uh, your option of your different masking. You've, you can use the brush tool, uh, a linear gradient, which is the old school grad filter and then the radial filter. Uh, so the first thing I want to do here is probably just uh, add a little bit more light into the sky, just uh, enhance that light a bit. So I'm going to use the radial gradient, uh, create new mask, and then we can use the radial gradient and then just sort of draw that where we want it. We want to just add a little bit more light into the, into the sky, so probably something to uh, about that effect. Um, what you can also do here, I've got this overlay, uh, pardon me, turned on here so you can see the red area that will be affected by the filter. You can also go into any of these filters, whether it be the um, radial filter, the brush tool, or the, um, uh, the graduated filter, and you can click on these three little dots here, and you can go to intersect mask here and then you can change uh, the luminance so that means that you can you can actually uh, target certain um, luminances in the photo so we want to go more for the brighter side so we come to this slider and lift up the darks and it'll only affect the the brighter parts of uh, within that filter so we just want to warm that up a little bit put a little bit of warmth in there probably a little bit of tint not too much uh, a little bit of saturation in there as well. That's probably enough. Uh, you could even uh, potentially punch up a little bit of exposure in there. And even down the bottom here, dehaze slider, you can add a little bit of reverse dehaze. Not too much. That just adds that little bit of sort of sun glow. Um, and you can even add a bit of saturation in there if you wanted to saturate those colors a little bit. So you can already see we've just added that little bit of extra light in the middle there. The other thing I'm going to do here is probably just darken down the sky and add a little bit more mood to the sky. So I'll go ahead and grab another mask here. I'll use the linear gradient, uh, which is the old fashioned um, graduated filter. Pull that down over the sky. I always leave this mask on just so I can see. You can turn this on and off just so I can see what's being affected. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit more contrast into that sky. So give it a little bit of sort of moodiness in there. That looks pretty good. 
Uh, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, I normally do this fairly early in my editing process actually, is add my vignette. So I always like to vignette the images. So I'm just going to uh, minimize that image or make it a bit smaller. I'm going to pick up another uh, mask. I'm going to use the, uh, the radial gradient again. And I'm going to draw a shape roughly the same size as the image. So probably something around there something like that now when you do these you can move this field around wherever you want the light to be or whether wherever you don't want it to be uh, that sort of thing so i probably want it to be mainly like about there then i'm going to invert it so if i come over here where it says radial gradient and click invert that then inverts that so it only affects the outside the next thing I'm going to do is make that much bigger. So if you hold down the shift key and then drag that out bigger, it will it won't lose its uh, shape. So it'll hold that same shape. Bring it out to about there. Maybe even a little bit bigger. Probably there. Okay, and then this is my vignette. So now let's turn that mask off and I'm going to bring down the exposure. You'll see it just darkens the outside of the image and really draws your eye into the into the light into the middle of the image so it's probably somewhere like that I also lift the shadows up on that um, probably a bit more like there okay now you can see we're starting to get a bit more of a dark and moody image and um, the next thing I'm going to do is just start to use the brush tool to add a little bit of um, detail where I want it to go I want to put a little bit more uh, emphasis on this water flow here so I'll use the brush tool for that uh, once again create a new mask we use the brush and you can adjust the size of your brush I normally have mine um, flow and density on about 65 to 75 we'll just leave it there for now so we're just going to brush into this white water now we're going to try and give this a little bit more texture and possibly even a little bit more light we'll just see um, but mainly into that flow there we'll just see what we can uh, what sort of effect we can have there so just going to come down add a little bit of texture to that just you can see that just gives that water that little bit of texture you could possibly add a little bit of clarity there too just a little bit and you could even play all the whites and see uh, white's always a good uh, sort of it adds light or luminance something like that okay so if we click before and after down the bottom here you'll see that's where we started and that's where we're up to we've already sort of started to create a, a pretty good image there uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to go really into the nitty gritty of this. There's lots of other little things that I'd probably do along the way, but I'm really just trying to show you the fundamental stuff. And most of my editing is pretty much done using these techniques, uh, just making fine uh, uh, tuning and little finessements here and there. And um, so the next thing I'm going to do, um, whites and blacks is how I create my contrast. So I'm going to once again get another... Uh, mask. I'm going to use the once again the radial filter or the radial gradient as they call it now. And I'm just going to draw that in the the area where I want all the action to be, which is really sort of right in the middle of the image. I don't want it over here on the right or the left. I want it sort of more in the middle of the image, so more sort of to to that effect. And uh, I'm going to just play with the whites and blacks that's how I always generate my contrast is using the whites and black slider so I'm just going to push those whites up and we always watch our histogram if we clip the whites this little light will come up here and if we clip the blacks it'll come up here so it's going to add some uh, some white in there which is luminance or light or so that's looking really good I push them pretty high until they almost clip so probably up to about uh, probably going to go up to about there and then you can do the same with the blacks um, and just be careful you don't clip them as well. They're probably pretty much good where they are. Essentially, that's sort of it in a nutshell. You just keep on doing those sorts of adjustments, finessing things. You could even use the brush tool, brush a little bit more golden light on some of these rocks and things like that. But really, that's my editing process in a nutshell. Uh, it is more refined than what I'm showing you here, but I don't want to spend too much time. But that's really where I sort of go with it, just using those adjustments there. Uh, one last thing I will show you here is uh, the sharpening technique, because a lot of people do ask me about that. Um, if you come over here to the detail, uh, the detail section, you'll see this one for sharpening. And I normally zoom in pretty tight somewhere in the middle of the picture that I want to look. So those rocks there. And then I do 
just start to add sharpening here and you can sort of give quite an amount of sharpening you should be able to see the difference I'm going to go a long way so you can clearly see it and you can see that makes a big difference now with the radius I normally keep it between the bottom which is 0.5 and up to about 1 I don't normally go much higher some people like to add a little bit of detail here as well uh, you can do that but uh, don't go above about 40 because it starts to add a little bit of noise so you get your sharpening to where you want it. Let's over sharpen it just so you can really see it. Just say so that's the point you want. You then can actually mask that sharpening in to the, because you only want it in certain areas. You don't want it in the whole image. You don't want the water and the sky and things like that to be sharp. So if you come to the masking slider and you hold one finger down on the option key on the keyboard and then grab that mask, you'll see the screen goes all white and just start to add that slider and the areas that are white are the only the areas that are going to be affected by the sharpening. So I'm going to pull it right down because you only really want to sharpen just the, the highlights in the rocks. So probably to about, probably to about there. And uh, if you zoom in on that now, you'll be able to see that sort of really sharpen those rocks. We turn that on and off. You can see the difference that's made. Uh, that sharpening that's how I do my sharpening so that's my editing technique in a nutshell uh, if I'll click before and after down the bottom here you can see there's the raw file we started with and that's where we went with it um, as I say I'd keep finessing it in different ways but essentially that is my editing process in a nutshell I hope you got something out of that stay tuned for some great images now and uh, thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it Righto guys, well that's a wrap on the video. It's nearly dark now, sunset has pretty much happened. Uh, we're running out of light for the video. That was unreal, like really hectic. Um, running around in every direction trying to get some images. Uh, I've actually taken heaps of photos, like um, a lot more than I normally would. So hopefully when I get home I've got something to work with. I'm pretty, pretty sure I've got some pretty good images to show you here. Uh, the moral to the story, just hang around, keep shooting, keep trying different things. Most of my images are uh, trying to get some water movement so the shutter speeds are around between uh, half a second and one second in that sort of area. Most of my apertures are around f8, f9, f11. Um, I did have to turn the aperture up a bit higher at some stage just to get the right shutter speed. But I've just taken lots of different stuff. Some really good colour in the sky. These sandstone rocks here look uh, really good when they get that evening sun glow on them. It's been a successful shoot. It was worth coming out. And I'm going to show you the images now. And I hope you enjoy it. One last thing. Do me a favour. As I always say, please, if you like the video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. And please go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. And in particular, let me know what you thought of the images. Thanks a lot guys, thanks for tuning in, see you next time.
I do hope you're enjoying these images. I really enjoyed this photo shoot and it was an absolute pleasure to edit these images. It really does make a big difference when you've got such a beautiful set of images that were captured in beautiful, soft, moody light.